What's cracking, y'all? You are now watching Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. I have put out videos in the past adding context and debunking a lot of this Kobe Bryant was inefficient BS. And whenever I come across Kobe Bryant detractors or anti-Kobe people, they really don't have much to say when they try to uh, provide a take against Kobe. One of the ones you'll frequently see them go to is, but Kobe was inefficient. 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 And I just facepalm myself every time I see it. And I don't even want to have debates anymore once you start just throwing the, but he was inefficient though. People. People, 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 people. People just completely leave out the fact that Kobe Bryant played a large amount of his career in an era of basketball where scoring was at its lowest point in the history of the league. It was a very defensive-centric era. The pace was very slow. It was very muck it up basketball. And if you remember, the league was not happy with the brand, the product they were putting out, because they wanted to see the basket or the ball go in the basket more. They were tired of seeing these games, 70 point games, 80 point games, 90 point games on the final score. And that's when they started changing the rules slowly and slowly and slowly until you have a high-octane uh, offensive game every night and it's easier to put points on the board, and that's where we're at now. But that goes all the way back to when Kobe and his contemporaries were playing and they wanted to put out a more beautiful and appealing brand, a product for the consumer base, because they figured seeing the ball go in more and having higher score games is a better product and more entertaining to the consumer, especially to the average NBA fan. And that's really how we got to the point where we're at now today, where it's just score at will, basically. But people always leave out the fact that Kobe played in that era. The league average and points per game once it got into the 90s, it did not hit 100 points per game until the 2008-2009 season. There was even a year in there in the 90s where teams were only averaging 91 points per game. 91 average. Yeah, that was a time. That was a time. But nobody else that played with Kobe gets that same treatment. Kobe Bryant was inefficient. He never he never shot a 50% field goal percentage at any part of his career. He's inefficient. He couldn't even shoot 50% once. Well, how many people did shoot 50% from the field during Kobe's era since he came into the league in 96 and through the most of those early to mid-2000s? Who was shooting 50% from the field? Because apparently, y'all make it seem like Kobe Bryant was the only guy that wasn't shooting 50% from the field during that time because he's the only one you keep telling me is inefficient. So that would lead me to believe that all his contemporaries at his position, all-star caliber, high-octane scorers, all-star caliber scorers, had to be shooting 50% from the field because they're all more efficient than Kobe Bryant. That is what you would lead me to believe. But I know that's not true. I was around during that time. No swing player 
who was a scorer, especially, who was a scorer, shooting 50% from the field during that time of basketball. Not Allen Iverson, not Vince Carter, not Tracy McGrady, and not, guess who? Not even Ray Allen, sharpshooter Ray Allen, wasn't even shooting 50% from the field back then. In fact, there were plenty of seasons, a handful of seasons, where Kobe Bryant shot a better field goal percentage than Ray Allen. But do you ever hear anybody call Ray Allen inefficient? Come on, people. They would dare not say Ray Allen was inefficient. But apparently Kobe Bryant's the only one that has a stigma attached to him when he shot a better field goal percentage than many of his contemporaries. If you are going to call Kobe Bryant inefficient, then you are calling that whole era of basketball inefficient. Were all those guys just inefficient? No. They weren't. It's how the game was back then. Nobody, no, the only prolific scorers or prolific players that were getting that 50%, hitting that 50% mark back in the day, were generally power forwards and centers because they were so close to the basket. But outside of that, you might have had a few small forwards, but generally point guards, shooting guards, small forwards were sitting in the 40% range somewhere. And the 50% were reserved for the power forwards and the centers. But based on that logic, you would be telling me, in which I hear these young kids all say today, well, not even the young cats, now you got the people in the media, they're all puppets now, with, a, with you know, the, the mainstream, their bosses, the puppeteers, telling them what to do, telling them what to say, on the payroll, legenda, all that nonsense. You, we got people out here saying now that the current brand of NBA players, well, they're just more skilled. That's why they're scoring more. That's why scoring's up. They're just more skilled than the players of the past. So everybody back in the 90s and the early, mid-2000s were just garbage? Is that what you're telling me? And these guys are just far superior because they're scoring more baskets? And it doesn't have to do with how the game has changed to promote scoring? Is that what you're telling me? That whole logic is just wrong. Because that's not the case. These guys today aren't so far superior. They're not. And I usually don't do this, what I'm about to do now put graphics up and all this stuff. But I'm going to do it just to show you guys I'm not making this up. And we can go down and look at these players and their percentages and have a look at it. Because I ain't making this up. So if y'all going to call Kobe inefficient, you better call everybody else inefficient. Let's take a look at it. So what we're going to do here is go from when these players were drafted, Kobe's contemporaries, and do go through the first 10 years of the 2000s. That, that gives you a solid sample size. And those last two years in the 2000s is when the league finally had got up to an average of 100 points per game. Then it dropped back down for two or three years before it started really going on a severe uptick. But here we go. That gives us a good sample size. We're going to start with Mr. Ray Allen, sharp shooter who never gets called inefficient. Ray Allen's field goal percentage from the point he was drafted through or up to or through the 2009-2010 season. 43%, 42%, 45% or 4, 45%, yeah. Another 45%, 48, 46, 43, 44, 40, 42, 45 43, 44, 48, 47%. Not a single 50% field goal percentage in that span. In fact, for his career, Ray Allen never shot 50% from the field at any point in his career. Next up, Tracy McGrady, a very prolific scorer for a bulk of his career before injuries put him out. Drafted in 97, T-Mac, who never gets labeled inefficient. Going down the line, 
45 percent 43 45 45 45 45 41 43 40 43 41 38 that's when he pretty much just shelled himself through, through the injuries but yeah 36 38 come on T Mac never gets called inefficient nor should he have been but I'm making a point here next up Vince Carter somebody that doesn't get called inefficient 45, 46, 46, 42, 46, 41, 41, 46, 43, 45, 45, 43, 42. Never shot 50% at any point in his career. It's Vince Carter. Next up, Allen Iverson. 41, 46, 41, 42, 42, 39, 41, 38, 42, 44, 41, 45, 45, 45, 41, um, 57, but he only played three games. That was in Memphis. That doesn't count. <laughs> but uh, Iverson, and even the fact that Iverson was shooting, what, 41% from the field on his career, at his size, out there in a league that was physical, more defensive-minded, and Giants, big guys getting to the paint. It's amazing what Iverson was even able to do at his size, carrying the load that he carried. Stephon Marbury, 40, 41, 40, 43, 43, 44, 44, 43, 43, 43, 46, 45, 45, or 41, uh, 41, 34. Come on, man. Dwayne Wade. Now, Dwayne Wade, obviously, he wasn't around for the 90s. But him and Kobe shared a few years in there where the scoring was still relatively low. Uh, Dwayne Wade, 46, 47, 49, 49, 46, 49, and 47. Uh, that's through 2009, 2010. Now, Dwayne Wade did hit the 50% mark the following season when LeBron James joined the team along with Chris Bosh. And I would have to imagine that having those two guys had something to do with all of them having improved field goal uh, uh, accuracy. But either way, uh, that first decade of the 2010s, Dwayne Wade did not hit 50% from the field. But eventually he would. Next up, LeBron James, y'all boy, LeBron. 41, 47, 48, 47, 48, 48. And 2009, 2010 season, LeBron finally hit 50% from the field. But he's been more or less uh, most seasons sitting at around 50 uh, since then. But like I said, the league has changed. Jerry Stackhouse, who joined in 1995, he was a pretty prolific scorer for a bit and an all-star. 41, 40, 45, 42, 37, 42, 40, 39, 40, 39, 41, 40, 42, 40, 26 percent and 40 percent. But that 26, he only played 10 games. Jerry Stackhouse, he could score, man. Gilbert Arenas, no chill Gil, the guy that doesn't stop yapping his mouth. What were you shooting? Gilbert Arenas, because you probably one of those guys quick to call somebody inefficient. Gilbert Arenas joined in the year 2001. 45, 43, 39, 43, 44, 41, 39. That's where he only played 13 games. I think that's when the whole gun thing happened, probably. Uh, 26, oh no, that, shoot, that might have been the year after. But 26, 41, um, 39, uh, I think I went too far, but yeah. And even the season where he shot 26% from the field, he only played two games. I think that must have been when the whole gun charges or whatever, the guns in the locker room thing was going on. But Gilbert Arenas, on his career, shot 42% from the field. Next up, Allen Houston, a somewhat prolific scorer. He had big, he had moments where he could really blow up and uh, and put up a lot of points. The most points he ever scored in a season was 22.5, but Ray Allen, or Allen Houston could get hot in a heartbeat. Uh, Allen Houston, who joined in, well, actually, he joined in 93, but we'll just go down the line since he never made it through 2010. 
29, or 40%, my bad, 46, 45, 42, 44, 41, 48, 44, 43, 44, 43, and 41 percent come on now none of these guys get called well, sometimes people do call Allen Iverson inefficient but generally these guys don't get called inefficient next up Joe Johnson who could really put points on the board drafted in uh, 2001 Joe Johnson 43 42 39 43 46 45 47 43 43 45 it's Joe Johnson folks Eddie Jones could put points up. Now, when Kobe got to the team, he was uh, coming off the bench for Eddie Jones. Eddie Jones, Eddie Jones, Eddie Jones. 46, 49, 43, 48, 42, 44, 42, 44, 43, 42, 40, 42, 40, 37, 44, and 36. 43% on his career. Carmelo Anthony, who really doesn't get called inefficient, never shot 50% from the field at any point of his career. 42, 43, 48, 47, 49, 44, 45. That's through 2010. Dirk Nowitzki, who is a seven-footer, prolific scorer of the basketball, who had a height advantage over most people that was guarding him. So he should have got off cleaner looks and everything, right? He should have been shooting a pretty damn good field goal percentage. Dirk Nowitzki, from the point he was drafted, 40%, 46%, 47, 47, 46, 46, 45, 48. Hit 50% in the 2006-2007 season. Then he went back to 47, 47, 48. Dirk Nowitzki did not shoot 50% from the field on his career. Never gets called inefficient. Next, Michael Finley, another guy who could also put points on the board, uh, was an all star at least once. Uh, Michael Finley had a very similar game to Kobe and Mike, how he utilized the post fadeaway. People slept on Michael Finley. Michael Finley was a beast. I actually did a video on Michael Finley here on his channel. You can search for it. But anyway, Finley, 47, 47, 43, 44, 44, 45, 45, 46, 42, 44, 42, 41, 41, 41, 43, and 38% from the field. He actually did hit 50 on the, the very end of his career. He only played 20 games with Boston, though. So he was only averaging five points per game, but yeah. Next up, Stevie Francis, swing player, point guard. One of those scoring point guards back in the day. Stevie Francis and Baron Davis would be beasts in the current NBA today. I'm telling you that right now. Stevie Francis, 44, 45, 41, 43, 40, 42, 43, 44, 40, and 33 before he ended his career. Shot 42% from the field on his career. Baron Davis, 42, 42, 41, 41, 39, 36, 40, 38, 43, 42, 37, 40. Just out of curiosity, I went over to the power forward positions, the Kevin Garnett's, the Tim Duncan's, because I was like, surely KG and Tim Duncan had to be shooting 50% from the field most of their career, given their position and where they played uh, location-wise on the floor, right? Kevin Garnett. 49, 49, 49. So close, but not quite. 46, 49, 47, 47. Hit 50% in 2002, 2003 season. 49. Hit another 50, another 50. Uh, 50 and 52. 47. And then 53, 53, 52. So on his career, he shot. Uh, 49% from the field, but he didn't eclipse 50 every single season, especially when that scoring was really low. He was hovering in the 40s, but high 40s. Tim Duncan was more solid from the field than Kevin Garnett. And Tim Duncan generally took less jumpers than Kevin Garnett did as well. 
But Tim Duncan came in 54, 49, 49, 49, 50, 51, 50, 49, 48, 50, 49, 50, 50, 51. But yeah. Now, to find a guard caliber player that was consistently hitting or at least a handful of times hitting 50% from the field, I had to go find players that could really shoot the ball but weren't scorers, so they weren't taking a high volume. I had to find two pass-first guys that I knew were sharp shooters that I knew probably were in the 50%, but not low-volume scoring assist guys that could shoot. Steve Nash. But even Steve Nash coming in. 42, 45, 36, 47, 48, 48, 46, 47. And it wasn't until he got with Mike D'Antoni and the Phoenix Suns that we see Ray that we see uh Steve Nash hit 50% from the field. There you go. And then I had to go. John Stockton was the other guy. Now Stockton started playing in the 1980s. So when we got into those 2000s, uh, he was on his last leg. But even John Stockton was had a lot of 50% uh, field goal percentage years in those 90s. So if we just go from, let's just go from 1990 on, uh, John Stockton. 50%, 48, 48, 52, 54, 53, 54, 52, 48, 50, 50, 51, 48 on his last season. So, like I said, prolific scores in that swing position where scoring was their priority. Nobody was shooting 50% from the field like that. Nobody. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Not during that era in those 90s, those mid-2000s-ish. But you see none of these other guys are called any efficient. Even if you go season for season and break down against some other these guys, uh, some of these other guys, Kobe each year versus these other guys each year, a handful of these guys, Kobe was shooting a better field goal percentage than them. To include Ray Allen. Come on, man. Stop the cat. If you're going to call Kobe inefficient, you're calling that whole era inefficient and subpar because you're, you're, you're dinging them for it. So you need to be dinging everybody else for it and keep that same energy. And just say that this era, you're saying that this era is far inferior than the era you're talking about now. Because you take any one of these guys that you want to call more efficient than Kobe Bryant, I don't care who it is. Oh, look at this guy. He's more. I'm just, I don't know if DeMar DeRozan is it, but I'm just using that as an example. DeMar DeRozan is more efficient than Kobe Bryant. Yeah, throw DeMar DeRozan in the NBA in the 90s and early 2000s or mid-2000s. I want to see what DeMar DeRozan is shooting. When there's actual defense and the paint is clogged up. There's actually bigs and you can get touched up a bit. And there's less spacing. Yeah, I want to see what DeMar DeRozan is doing then. A lot of these guys in the NBA now... You drop them and pass errors, they would be still good, but a slightly lesser version than version than themselves. I can promise you that. That's all I gotta say about it. You saw the numbers. Does anybody want to talk about numbers, 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 analytics, numbers? Kobe, his numbers aren't good, his analytics are good. There's some numbers for your ass. Y'all like to cherry pick all the time. Well, here's me cherry picking. Showing you the stuff that you don't want to put out there. Come on with these narratives. Like, comment, subscribe. Rest in peace to the Black Mamba. And I catch y'all on the next one. We out, baby.